Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a huge polling update when it comes to the 2024 election. We've got a new Pennsylvania poll from Trafalgar. And of course, the coping, oh, it's a Republican pollster. But they've got Trump up by about two and a half points. And they've got Casey up by only two as well over McCormick. Now, what does this do? Well, if you look at the Real Clear Politics overall average, Donald Trump right now, according to the Real Clear Politics average, remember, go back to 2020, 2016, it, nowhere close. He is now the favorite to win just according to the average, meaning there really wouldn't have to be a polling error for Trump to win. And even if he goes into election night, possibly, you know, if you look at the, the averages, maybe down in four of the swing states, you're really not talking about it. Like the thing with, with Trump this year, he just does not need a polling error. He really doesn't. I mean, there could be pretty accurate polls and Trump could win very easily. Um, this is just another poll. It's funny how they always gaslight and they're like, oh, Trafalgar, they're so conservative. I mean, they got like all the swing states right in 2020. They were way more accurate than a lot of these liberal pollsters that get A-plus ratings. It's like you see some of these pollsters that get A-plus ratings. No, 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 you're right. They only got Trump off by eight points in 2020 and six points in 2016, but they're going to be accurate this year. No, 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 Quinnipiac's going to be accurate. Well, actually, Quinnipiac, I think, has Trump up by one right now in the general popular vote. But like, no, 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 Bloomberg's going to be accurate. It's like, how many times can these pollsters be wrong? And it's like, the, these people still trust them. It's like, you're banging your head into a wall it's the most ridiculous thing, but with this update, this new Pennsylvania poll, this is a Republican pollster, but they were very accurate in 2020 in select swing states. They were one of the more accurate pollsters graded by 538 in 2020, and so, I mean, you want to say they're, they're, they're biased. Well, they were very accurate. I don't know what to tell you, so you look at this. These are very good numbers for Donald Trump. Right now, if you look at the Real Clear Politics overall average with Pennsylvania, we know he's leading right now in North Carolina. We know he's leading in Georgia. We know he's leading in Arizona. If he leads Pennsylvania, if he wins those states, the election's over. Michigan is meaningless at that point. Wisconsin is meaningless. Minnesota's meaningless. Virginia's meaningless. It doesn't matter if uh, really, honestly, he doesn't even need Arizona. If he wins Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia, those are kind of the big three. And right now, according to the polls, the aggregate... He leads in all of them, obviously different models, way different things. It's, I think, kind of ridiculous that there are models. You would think, th th this is the crazy thing when it comes to these models. You would think that because Trump has overperformed the polls, they would weigh it to where there would almost be an expectation that Trump would do a little bit better. But we're seeing the opposite with these models. We're seeing Trump, in terms of just the overall average based on the polls, with like a 51, 52% chance to win, and the model has given him a 43% chance to win. Well, how does that make sense? When back in 2016, the polls suggested he had about a 10% chance to win, but no, he actually won. In 2020, I mean, they said he was going to get trounced. He was within 40K votes. He overperformed basically all the swing state polls. So when you factor that in, you would you would say that an accurate model that weighs polls accurately and, and really you know, hones in on the pollsters that got Trump right in 2016 and 2020 and got him wrong, they would say, well, if Trump, just in terms of the overall polls, has like a 52% chance to win, that's really like a 70% chance because of how Trump overperforms the average polls, but they never weigh it like that. It's like, I, I mean, oh my God, ABC News, they only got the election wrong by 14 points in 2020. They, they deserve an A+. plus. Yeah, no, no, no. They only were 14 points off. That's just, that that that's within the margin. That's within the margin of error, right? It's like, these, they keep getting it wrong. Why are they going to get an A-plus pollster? They suck. I mean, they're going to get it wrong again. It's just, it's ridiculous. But um, this is good news for Trump. And I would say if you factor in, if you weigh it properly based on how Trump overperforms in polls, he's got like a 70 to 80% chance just based off the polls to win the general election with this new release. Uh, you've got Politico coming out. How about this? Well, the whole dynamic with the hurricane is crazy because it's like, like Biden doesn't even like it's almost like Biden doesn't exist. There's really no president. So it's like and people were saying, well, he had no effort to do anything, you know, with the hurricane. And of course, I mean, he just he's he, once again, he was he's vacationing in Delaware. Nobody was even at, the, at this point with Biden. He's so irrelevant. Nobody even cares. I mean, it's like, OK, he's going to va vacation again. But Trump. Oh, look at this Politico. Trump drags the hurricane into the 2024 campaign because People were criticizing Biden and Harris's response. There was no response from them. 
And then Trump said he was going to deliver supplies. And then, of course, they say, I mean, I mean, it's all gaslighting. It's like when Trump does something good, it's, oh, it's only for his own benefit. So in essence, he can never do anything good because if he does something good, they say, oh, he's just doing it for selfish reasons. That's the new liberal thing. It's the, you know, remember when with the memorial, uh, when, when he visited the families of, of the, the people that died in Afghanistan, it was, oh, Trump's selfish. He's using it as a photo op. If Trump does something good, they just gaslight you and say, oh, he's just selfish. He's doing it for himself. Even if he donates a million dollars here, a million dollars there, it's it's selfish. He gives $100 to a lady in a joke to help pay for groceries. That you know He's selfish. That's a crime. It's disgusting. So it's either you do something good and you can't win because then you're, you're selfish and you don't do anything, then you're just a bad person. Trump can never win with these people, ever. They're never going to be happy, no matter what he does. And, and this is what it is. You do something good. You want to go help people in the hurricane. You're selfish. You're trying to use it as a photo op. You don't do it. You're bad. It's just, it's all crap. It's, it's, it's all, it, it, it's just, there's no winning. Uh, Trump in the last three days, town hall in Michigan, event in Michigan, rally in Wisconsin, interview, meeting, Z- meeting with Zelensky, press conference, Georgia, Alabama football game, rally in Pennsylvania, Kamala the last three days, 20 minute photo op at the border, Private fundraiser in rich San Francisco uh, with rich donors in San Francisco. Yeah, she's just not cut out for this. But the thing is, a lot of this is because they cannot draw people for these rallies. They genuinely cannot get people to go. So that's why, I I mean, I would love to see the difference in terms of the amount of rallies Trump's had versus Kamala. And especially Kamala trying to like have a rally at an arena with like 16,000. They cannot fill it up. Logistically, it would be a nightmare. I mean, if Kamala Harris wanted to have a rally at like an NBA arena with 19,000, she would have to give her logistics people and the people running the event like a $20,000 raise just for the event because with what they would have to do with all the buses, with getting people from all the other states to come in and actually do it and fill it up and they would still have to bring the curtains down in the upper deck, she nobody wants to go to her rally so she can't have any. See, Biden had the ultimate excuse in 2020 with the pandemic. It was like the perfect thing for Democrats. Oh, my God. It was the perfect thing for them. Uh, But they don't get that in 2024. And you're seeing the difference in terms of they just they can't have rallies because nobody wants to go. Nobody, nobody, nobody cares. You've also got this. uh, What 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 is going on here? So apparently this is in Las Vegas. Absolutely effing ridiculous. They allow for such a disgusting stunt against a former and potential next president. They've got a naked Trump. I, I, these liberal, they're just weirdos, man. They really, oh, this was crazy. Yeah, I saw this. I thought it was fake. So I had to look it up on, on Google and, and know there's like 20 articles about it. John Kerry calls the First Amendment a major block in stopping disinformation. Oh, you don't say. It's almost like you're <laughs> in stopping dis- Dude, a disinformation and misinformation. They're, I never say those words because... They're trigger words for liberals, and when it comes to disinformation and misinformation, it really is just the stuff that they don't like. That They just label it disinformation. It's really a total joke. They can label whatever they want disinformation, and of course, it's a big problem, especially when they controlled Twitter. We saw what they, would do, what they, what they did and how they censored conservatives, and then they claimed it was a private company. We don't need the First Amendment, but I think it is very important that people understand what these liberals are saying when it comes to the First Amendment, especially on the internet. I mean, this is even crazier because it's like he's saying they need to change the First Amendment, the, uh, the First Amendment in general. But I think he's talking about more so on the internet. Elon Musk is going to be, I mean, he's going to be in a legal hell if Kamala Harris wins. They are so, I mean, they are going to try and police the hell out of X and they're going to do whatever they can to get X into their control again. And they're going to threaten advertisers. They're going to blame X for something, probably something bad that happens. And what a horrible statement that is. The First Amendment is a major block to stopping disinformation. Do you know what you're saying? Well, who decides disinformation? Is it liberals? Because it was liberals in 2021. And they banned doctors off of X uh, or off of Twitter at the time because uh, they didn't say the proper thing when it came to the vaccine. Really? That's how we're going to police things? disinformation, it's not actual disinformation. It's stuff that you don't like and you don't want to be shared. And so it, this is just, just such a horrible statement. I don't even know what to say. I mean, <laughs> the First Amendment is a major block. And, and I think again, I think he's talking about online because that's really where the first, at this point, it's like the First Amendment, it's more important when it comes to social media aspect because that's how we're all communicating with each other now. It's not a lot of in person. It's, it's more so 
uh, on the internet and, and, you know, getting your point across out, you, you can, you can certainly reach a much bigger audience, but what a horrible, horrible thing to say. The first amendment is a major block to disinformation. And what is disinformation? It's, you know, I guess the liberals decide they certainly decided in 2021 and 2022. And look, look how that worked out with all the, uh, the vaccine bullshit and things like that and saying everyone needed it when in reality, uh, if you were young, I'm not going to get into that, but certainly you, you've got doctors that if you're young, you're healthy. It's it's not something that you necessarily need. And we see all that all turned out. But either way, guys, pretty crazy. Donald Trump right now, he doesn't need a polling error. Even if he was losing Pennsylvania by like half a point, the polls this year are so much different to where, I mean, if you have an accurate model that weights things based on 2016 and 2020, Trump should have like a 65 to 70% chance to win at least. Instead, many of these models are saying he's got a 40% chance to win because they continue to trust the, the poll, pollsters that are constantly five to six points off when it comes to polling Donald Trump. And they're going to be wrong again. They just love being wrong. They love being wrong, all these models, because it's like you would figure if it's just simple math. If Trump way overperformed the polls in 2016 and 2020, now he's basically tied in the polls. So you would think you would bump him up even more because how, of how he overperformed in 2016 and 2020. They're not doing that. They're actually bumping him down. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.